Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. Another weekend, another game, another big game, another point. Not free, a point. Manchester City won, Liverpool won. Um, not the result we wanted. Uh, a little bit disappointed not to come away from the game with three points. Same as the feeling against Chelsea. Uh, came out the ground a little bit disappointed, thinking they was there for the taking. You know what I mean? Manchester City played well. We dominated the game. We didn't finish our chances and we let them back in. Um, yeah, a little bit frustrating. Nothing to panic about. It's Liverpool. It's Chelsea. Um I think Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, you know, that might work out to be a good point at the end of the season. I think they'll take a few points off people there. But Liverpool at home, fully expecting Liverpool to be in the title race this season. Um, an opportunity to, to take points off them, um, three points off them, is, uh, you know, we shouldn't be letting that slip, really. Um, early kickoffs. They're not the best, I've got to be honest. You know, 12.30 kickoffs, the atmosphere, getting to the ground, it was freezing. Um, I actually worked my first game in the studio for Manchester City Live, so I was there quite early. A um, lot of fans milling about, a lot of tourists and that milling about, um, but it was bitterly cold, bitterly cold. Um was quite quietly confident about the game. Uh, done a lot of previews last week about the match. Wasn't really feeling that Liverpool could come and win at the Etihad. Um, I was just hoping City could bounce back from the draw, get everyone back from international duty on her, and, and um, basically get a big three points and kick us on. Uh, as it goes, it didn't happen that way. You know, we got a point. We had to settle for a point in the end. Um, Starting lineup was announced. Only major surprise was Gr uh, Jack Grealish was uh, missing. He wasn't in the squad. Um, I believe he was ill. After the game, I actually saw his dad and he told me, he did confirm that he was ill. He said he woke up with a bit of a fever. He was shivering. He had to go back to bed. So uh, nothing too sinister there. Um, we was in an hour in the studio whether Doku would start. Obviously, with Jack being ill, maybe it forced Pep's hand. He started. Uh, folded on the right, Haaland up front. Uh, midfield, uh, Alvarez just behind Bernardo Rodri. And then he went for Diaz, Akanji, Walker and Nathan Ake and Edison. So, looking at the team, yeah, no problems with it. Looked at the Liverpool team. Looked at Curtis Jones in midfield. Can we get in and about him? McAllister. Uh, Simicast on the left, Doku up against Trent. Um, we were looking all right in the studio. I wasn't panicking. I was looking at the two teams. I was thinking we could get a bit of joy. You know what I mean? We could get a bit of joy here. Um, game started reasonably well. Manchester City on the front foot. Some good early positive touches from Jeremy on the left. Uh, went at Trent a few times. Beat Trent most of the time. You know what I mean? Crosses coming in, getting blocked away. City was dominating the game in the first half, in my opinion. I think City um, controlled the tempo, controlled it. I thought the crowd in the first 15 to 10 minutes was okay. For an half 12 kickoff, you know what it's like. No one's been on the ale. No one's got that Dutch courage. You're rushing around. You're getting in the ground. Um, yeah, I thought it was all right. Um, then we get the goal. You know what I mean? The big man again, Erling Haaland. A fantastic bit of skill from Nathan Ake to bring the ball down and push it in between the two defenders and play the ball through to Earl, who spun and put it low. Alisson got a little touch to it, I think, and it dribbled into the net, but it's 1-0. 1-0, you're thinking, happy days. Earl in there, 50 goals. First, uh, fastest to 50 goals in the Premier League history. Another record is broke. Not bad for a tapping merchant. Um, and then you're thinking, right, open the floodgates now. We've got them on the rack. Let's go. We did a lot of huffing and puffing first half. A lot of um, good work from Jeremy down the, down the left, but there was no end product. I mean, at the minute, I think it was David James in the commentary. Oh, no, it was Charlie Adam. I think he said he was like a, uh, a speedboat with no driver. You know, he gets to 
he just gets to where he's going and that, when he gets there, he don't really know what he's doing. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's right. I think Jeremy, he does the hard work. He beats the man. When you're looking for a dinked cross, he'll play it low. When you're looking for a low cross, he'll play it high. I just think it's that decision-making in the final third that lets him down a little bit. Sometimes when you think he's going to shoot, he'll cut back in again or the shot's not as powerful. So I think things like that will come with time. I think it comes with experience. I think it's his first season. But I'll tell you something, he's electrifying to watch and he definitely gives Man City a different outlet. And he definitely gave Liverpool a problem. They didn't really know how to take him. I thought Akanji stepping into midfield, we know it's not his favourite position. We know he looks a bit awkward in there. He didn't do too bad. He did get caught a couple of times in possession, but we've got to remember it's not his position. John Stones makes that look really easy. It ain't easy. Um, against Chelsea, we found out it wasn't easy. He was exposed. Against Liverpool, he was a lot more calmer on the ball, a lot more safe. And I think he did the job well. Um, obviously, Liverpool, they got the threat of Mo Salah on the right. Darwin Nunes, for me, didn't really do an awful lot. Uh, Jota, the same. Um I thought Curtis Jones played well in the first half. I thought he had a lot of energy about him and he was trying to do things. Mo Salah, though, obviously so dangerous. I spoke about it before the game uh, in the studio saying, you know, we've got to be on our toes. And Nathan Ake was the right choice. I think Nathan, with his experience, really, really um, kept a good eye on Salah and stopped him dominating it. As soon as he brought the ball down, Nathan was in touching distance of him. He was forcing him wide. He, he was basically just getting in the blocks and, and, and frustrating afternoon for Salah. Um, but at half time, I mean, I, I'm sat there and I'm thinking, I'm happy with it. We're going in 1 0 up. Um, we are creating chances. Surely it's a matter of time before we go out there and we finish the game. Didn't happen like that. Second half, Klopp made a lot of substitutions, trying to get a, a bit of summer out of his team. Liverpool had a little spell second half where they 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 was uh, dominant. They, they kept kept the ball well, but they was not creating major chances. They just sort of you know had a lot of possession. Um, and then there was the chance, the goal. Ruben Diaz, the cross comes in. Allison jumps. It comes out of his hand. And um, Diaz taps it in. I mean, me and David James had a bit of a, not an argument, but disagreement. David James is a goalkeeper. He's going to protect the keeper. I'm looking at it and saying he never touched him. He said he grabbed his arm and pulled his arm down. He didn't do that. You know what I mean? Uh, Alisson reaches out and pushes Ake, uh, Akanji at first. They both jump at the same time. Very minimal contact. Alisson spewed it. Uh, Diaz has tapped it in the net. Then Allison rolls around on the floor holding his foot. Now, if he'd have been holding his arm, then maybe he's jumped up, gripped his arm. He's, he's put him off, whatever. I can get that. But when you're holding your foot, it tells me that you haven't really got a fucking clue what's going on and you're hoping that that ain't a goal. You know, if you're a Liverpool fan, she's you, saying it's never a goal. It's a foul on the keeper. If he's a City fan, it's a goal. At the end of the day, they didn't give it. We can't dwell on it. It's one of them things. We've seen some mad decisions this season go for and against other teams as well. So it is a mad one. There needs to be some clarity in the rules with a goalkeeper because you can't just have goalkeepers falling on the floor when they drop a bollock and then saying everyone's pushed him because you'd never be able to go near the goalkeeper if that was the case. You know what I mean? So anyway, that was disappointing. I think if the second one goes in, we win the game comfortably. Um, Liverpool never really looked like scoring. They had a little, few little chances here and there, but nothing where I was like off my seat thinking they're going to score here. You know what I mean? Um, they brought on Graven Birch. Um, they brought on a few players, Harvey Elliott and etc., to try and lift the game. Uh, Diaz, but Diaz came on, did rarely had a touch. He rarely had a touch. Um, we looked at the City bench. I'm going to be honest. I was a little bit concerned. I looked at the bench. There was nothing there to me that excited me to come on and change the game. You know, you've got Rico Lewis, Calvin Phillips. John Stones is not fit. You know, you've got two goalies on there and Oscar Bob. So this myth about Man City having the uh, biggest squad in the league and having three players in every position is a load of shit. Do you know what I mean? We've got a few injuries and that. But looking at the bench, we didn't look like we could change it. 
especially a positive change. Maybe if Stones was fit, you could have brought him on for a, a Kanji, maybe. Um, Rico, is he going to change the game? No. Oscar Bob, is he going to change a game like that against Liverpool? Probably not. So, yeah, it was a little bit disappointing uh, looking at the bench. Um, and then we had another fantastic chance. Uh, Doku down the line again, whips it in. Erling Haaland gets to the near post, flicks it. Fantastic save by Allison. Brilliant save. And then they go straight up the other end and they score. Trent Alexander, one touch, finish, bottom low. Uh, corner. He runs over to the fans, giving it all this shushing. I don't know what he's shushing about because maybe he was embarrassed because I've never seen a fullback get beat as many times as him in a game. Um, so I don't really know what he was shushing about. You know what I mean? I can't remember him winning the league last year or the treble or the Champions League. So I don't know if he's shushing us about that. But listen, I don't know. Hey, listen, I'm not taking anything away. I give him his props. It was a good finish. But Disappointing to concede again. Disappointing to concede the goal. You know what I mean. And then, and then you look. I looked then. I thought these two teams are showing each other a bit too much respect. I thought the game petered out to a draw. There was very little in it. And then, um, obviously, we have seen Pep on the touchline uh, giving it all this to the fans. Come on and all that. I mean, it's caused a lot of disagreement amongst people. Some Manchester City fans are saying he's throwing us under the bus. Now, I get that. If you're in that south stand week in, week out, and you sing your arts out, and the manager's asking people to sing, he ain't directing that at you, let me tell you. He ain't directing that at that south stand because the south stand, week in, week out, turns up and gets behind the team. He's turning around to the Tunnel Club, £700 a game. They've just had sausage butties, onion chutney, and fucking Prosecco, Right? Uh, and a load of hors d'oeuvres and had the pictures took with a, with, a, with a treble. They ain't getting on the seat ballooning. They ain't. I was in there the other week uh, with Asai. There was people with Sudoku books in there, right? It's embarrassing. But that's corporate football. If Pep had made a plea to the South Stand directly, then, you know, it's a different story. But the South Stand was trying the Liverpool end was flat as well. It was a 12.30 kickoff. No excuse, but them 12.30 kickoffs are garbage. But there's a big problem going on at Man City at the minute. The South Stand and the corner next to the away fans, they're the only two sections in that stadium that want to sing, that want to create an atmosphere. The rest of it is a tourist corporate bowl now. That's it. I'm sorry to say it is. They've gone down that road. I'm getting text messages now every single day of Manchester City. Do you want to sell your Tottenham ticket? Do you want to put your Tottenham ticket on the exchange? Do it now. So I put my Tottenham ticket on the exchange for 65 quid. Man City will sell it for 350 quid to anyone as part of a package. Then people ain't going to sing, Pep. Sorry, Arno. Then people ain't going to sing, mate. They're coming with their iPad for a day out to see the treble winners and to see Erling Haaland, right? So there's a very fine line in the stadium at the minute, how you want it. Do you want to sell all these corporate tickets? Do you want to get the guys coming in, spending three, £400 per match on merchandise? But they're turning the match day experience in the stadium bad. They're not getting behind the team. To them, it's a day out and it's a trip. There's a lot of season ticket holders out there um, who get behind the team. There's a lot of us that try and get behind the team, but it's hard to do it when you've got somebody in front of you stood up all game with an iPad, taking pictures. Do you know what I mean? This is the uh, unfortunate um, circumstances when you're successful. Every team goes through it. Every team goes through it. We knew that was going to happen. You win the treble, you sign Earl in Haaland, you win every week, you're going to attract... Um, Global supporters that want to come and watch Manchester City play great football, win the game, take pictures, buy shirts, go on. That's fine. But we need a balance. We need a balance because there's a lot of match going, um, Mancunian, hungry supporters in that stadium that want to get behind that team week in and week out. They, they, love, they love the badge. They love the shirt. We've got to create an atmosphere. 
if the manager is asking for the fans to create an atmosphere, then there's a problem. But instead of the manager going like this to the fans, why is he not going to his friend, Soriano and Tixi Bergestein and whoever's in charge and saying, look, what's the crack here? Because there's some dynamic in the stadium. It, it don't work. It don't work. We need to sort something out. We need to. Um, I get you can't make people sing if they don't want to sing. I get it. But what I'm saying is, what's the answer? I'm not saying um, all the, 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 the tourist fans that come to the game are like that. They, I've seen tourist fans come to the game who are unbelievable behind the team and everything. But we need to know what's going on. There needs to be sections where you can put on a ticket. This is a singing section. But you've actually got to want to sing if you go in there. You don't go in a singing section and stand there and film the singing section and not sing. Because that defeats the point. I get you want to be with the atmosphere. But if you want to be with the atmosphere, contribute to the atmosphere. Go in that stadium and think, right, I've got a ticket. I'm fortunate enough to be in 116, 115, 117. I'm in the singing section. Today, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to sing and get behind the lads. Do that if you're in the singing section. Don't sit there and film everyone around you because it happens every week and you're pissing people off. And now the manager, it looks like he's throwing some of the proper fans under the bus. So rival fans are on us all the time. Oh, your crowd shit. Your manager's got to ask for atmosphere. blah de blah de blah de blah It gets jarring me. It gets jarring. Do you know what I mean? My section where I sit and the stand I'm in does its job. Week in, week out, they do its job. If you want more atmosphere... Get the club to make certain blocks, singing only sections, and get the 1894 group or the supporters groups to fill them with supporters that have been going for years, want to go for years. City v Liverpool, there should be a criteria that you've attended at least, in my opinion, at least, I don't know, 10 games at the Etihad in the last two years that then tells me you're a decent level of a fan and you, and you, you know what i mean if you're giving tickets for liverpool to someone that's never been before with no ticket history or nothing then it's a gamble you're going to get that you're going to get that so you know i believe that if the fans would have got behind the team in that last 10 or 15 minutes i think we'd have got them over the line we got them over the line. I can't say nothing because I was in the box um, for that game doing TV work. I've never done it before, but usually I'm in the south stand. But I was there and I was watching it from, from sort of Pep's point of view. And the Liverpool fans were poor, the City fans were poor. I get it. Um, but what's the answer, people? Do you know what I mean? I don't want to get criticised of fans saying I'm having a go at my fans. I'm not having a go at our fans. I defend our fans. I'm having a go at, if anything, I'm having a go a little bit at the manager for throwing us under the bus. And I'm having a go at Soriano and that for catering for all this corporate hospitality, which is beautiful. We get it. But don't lose the thought that this is a football stadium for football fans to get behind the team. And in football, over the years, the fans have got a lot of power. The 12th man has got a lot of power. We've made that stadium a fortress. Champions League night, Real Madrid. Bayern Munich, Hamburg in the UEFA Cup, these nights, go and watch them, sorry, Arnold, and tell me that that atmosphere did not help the players, because it did. And that's what we've got to create. That is what we've got to create. Whether the 1894 has got to open a membership and get like-minded fans who want to sing and want to chant in one block, a bit like Crystal Palace, people can call it cheesy. People can call it crap. Oh, that's fucking Tim Bob and all that. But is it, though? What's Tim Bob? You'll sit there and look at Russian TV, watch a load of guys dressed in black, bang the drum and fire fireworks and tell me it's an amazing atmosphere. So what's the difference with getting 60, 70, 80 like-minded Man City fans in one block who go week in, week out, they get the songs going all the way through the game, uh, they have their own uh, membership, they um, do TIFO displays and all that in the South Stand and they make the atmosphere better. What, what's wrong with that? You know, it's pro it's proactive. It's trying to do something. We can all sit on our ass and criticise and say, oh, that looks shit. He's a dickhead with a drum. Who's that with a megaphone? I'm not part of that. We can all do that. But at the end of the day, I find it embarrassing myself that we've just won the treble. We've got the best manager in the world who's assembled the best team in the world. And he's having to ask for noise 
in the last 10 minutes against Liverpool in a Premier League game. And that's what I find uncomfortable. I know the reasons. Half 12 kickoff. Some people like having a beer and all that. We'll go Leipzig on Tuesday. It'll be bouncing. We'll go Spurs next Sunday. It'll be bouncing. But we've got to make sure it's bouncing all the time. Or at least we've got to give that little bit of something in these games. These are Liverpool. It's a title race. We've got to do something. And then at least we can all go home and say, you know what? We give it our all there. The players didn't let us down. We let us down. Do you know what I mean? And then we, we need to go to the game and think, well, I did my part. I, I Me and the South stand or the North stand or whatever, we all got behind the lads today and, and we got them over the line. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what the answer is. I don't. A lot of people reached out to me, Steve, we need to do this, Steve, to do it. I can't do anything. I'm a fan just like you. Just because I do some bits of work for the club doesn't mean I have any power. I have not got no power. I'll say things like this. People at the club might not like it. People at the club might pull me and say, what, what do you think, Steve? But I'm open for any open discussion. I'm open to get, sorry, Arno, Pep, yeah? Um, whoever's in charge at City about tickets, the 1894 group, supporters club group, and myself and whoever, get in a room, let's talk it out if we've got a problem about the fans. Let's, let's sit there and have a discussion about it like grown-ups and see what we can do. I know sometimes it's we can't get tickets for extra people and all that. I get that season ticket holders, but there's got to be something we can do. There's got to be a mailing list or something on uh, where we can say to people, uh, you're in this block in this game. Please get to your seats 10 minutes early. We're going to start getting the atmosphere going. Turn the PA system off because it's too loud, ballooning all the time. No atmosphere builds, no chanting builds because it's being interrupted by loads of mad stuff. So there's got to be ways and things how we can do it. There's got to be ideas we can thrash out around the table to make it better. And Manchester City's always been a club that listens. So if the manager, our manager, is asking for atmosphere, it's making the ones that give the atmosphere bad and it's making us annoyed and we're just getting the target of idiots from other groups. So what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? There's got to be someone who watches this from Manchester City. You know my number. You want to get involved in something. Let's see how we can do it. How can we work it out? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. Or do we just leave it and we just let it continue and hope the team just keeps pulling us out of the shit. We watch beautiful football. And then the, when the team actually finally need the fans, we just say, oh, well, we couldn't really be asked because it was an half 12 kickoff and I didn't have six pints. Is that the excuse? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. But... You know, I spoke to people from 1894. They've told me a few things that they're trying to do. Um, Pep has been balanced in his views. He did say against Man United away, we were fantastic. And we are. The away support's good. The Etihad support is good. It's really good. It's just a one-off. But what I'm saying is, it's a one-off against Liverpool. And the manager, he's throwing his arms around and giving it all this. It's like, it's a bit... No. I'd rather him... I'd rather him said to one of the subs warm up down that touchline near the south stand and go and get the crowd up. I'd rather him done that. Let the subs run up and go, come on, get the crowd up. Or get a message to one of the players on, on the pitch, like a Rodri or something, to go near the crowd and get them going. When the manager's doing it, it's a bit hard to take, do you know? And then he can come in after the game and say, the fans were flat today. Let's sort something out. We need something. If Pep Guardiola sat down with a few fans groups and we all sat together with him, and we understood what he wanted. And we could go back into the stands and say to people, we've had a meeting with Pep. We could do a podcast. We've had a meeting with Pep. This is what he expects. You're coming in that south stand. Let's get in early. Let's do this. Finish your pints at uh, uh, five minutes before kickoff. Get in there early. Let's get the crowd going. Get this doing. Turn the music off. All sing Blue Moon. Put your scarves up. Whatever it is, that's what we need to do. But... Just getting thrown under the bus all the time and being told your manager, even your manager thinks you wankers because you don't sing at home. And after one game, when I watched endless games at weekends from Anfield to to uh, the Emirates to Chelsea, where he's dead as dodo, you know what I mean? But we get the criticism alongside everything else. So, you know, that's my rant on it anyway. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to be proactive. I'm trying to help out. A lot of people reach out to me. So I am trying to see what people want. Give me some ideas, people. 
Put them in the comments below. Let me know what you think. What would you do? How can we improve the atmosphere? How can we make the atmosphere better constant? Do you know what I mean? Let me know what, what, what we do. Have we got people in that corner who can organise something from that corner to the south stand? So they're both in, you know, they're both on the same hymn sheet. Part of the 1894, can we stick some over there, some here, some up there, some there, and say, right, before the game, we're all going to sing Blue Moon, put a scarf up, then we're going to do this, drop a TFO down. It needs to be more organised for me. Do you know what I mean? It needs to be more organised. But, you know, I'm trying. Don't like when the fans get criticised. Don't like it when I see the manager doing that. Um, so that's my little rant on it. But, you know, it is what it is. We'll be there on Tuesday night in the South. Let's get it going. We'll be there on Sunday against Tottenham. Let's get it going. Let's bounce back. Let's prove to Pep that we can do it. You know what I mean? We don't need 10, 15 pints and a full English. Let's just do it. You know what I mean? But I think when he's waving to the tunnel club, you're waving to the wrong people, Pep. Get down the touchline a bit and aim it towards us at the South Stand. And I'm sure you're going to get a reaction. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. So, yeah, listen, we didn't quite make it. It was 1-1. Proud of Erling getting his 50th goal. Fantastic. Another record for the big man. Um, we're going into Leipzig on Tuesday night. Uh, I think it's going to be a game where we um, change it a bit. I can see Rico Lewis. I can maybe see Oscar Bob starting. Uh, Calvin Phillips might get a game. I uh, don't know if Nunes is fit. Grealish might have recovered. Ortega might start in net. So I think he's going to swap it about a little bit. Um, and then we move to Tottenham at weekend. But, you know, it's all coming thick and fast. We've got two big games now. If we can beat Tottenham and we can beat Villa... If you'd have said to me, out of 12 points, you'll get eight. Maybe it's not a bad return, eight and not be beat. Two draws, two wins. It's not bad. Like I've said before, we've got to keep on the coattails of the big guns. We've got to make sure we're sniffing around. We've got Kevin De Bruyne to come back, seeing a few things, saying it's January. It's going to be like a new signing. Johnny Stones to come back in as well. And in my opinion, we need signings in January. I've looked at it. I looked at that bench at weekend and I thought, no, we need signings in January. It looks light. We've got to go out there, spend a bit of that treble money, go and grab a couple of new players, freshen the squad up a little bit and go for that final push. Um, but yeah, this is it, people. Listen, thanks to everyone who was seen at weekend at the game, come up to me and that. Thank you to everyone on the blue carpet. I did an interview to give me a good reception. Um, really enjoyed my first... Um, Match day live experience in the studio. Really enjoyed it. Charlie Adam was a great guy. He looked after me and David James too. Um, what else did they have to say? Oh, yes, t shirt, Blue Moon Rising. The treble winners t shirt is available now on Instagram at Blue Moon Rising. Where's my little bit of card? I'm sure I have a card in here with it on. There, Blue Moon Rising t shirt. To be fair, it's a banger. I've seen it. I spoke to him. It's got the treble winners on it. It's got a nice blue moon. Christmas presents in it. What do you get your dad for Christmas? City fan. Ginger wig in it. Everyone who goes ginger wig gets air fresheners and all that. You can go and get Nigel's book off Amazon to the blue moon and back. You can also go and get t-shirts off Danny. Blue moon rising on Instagram. Um, he's got all cups and all stuff like that. Big city fans, you know what I mean? Doing t-shirts for the lads. The, the local guys trying to earn a few quid. Help them out, people. Go and see them. But listen, Big Steve's had a rant. And don't think that Big Steve is trying to dictate or, or, or say what's a good fan and what's a not a good fan. I'm not saying that, yeah? All I'm saying is my opinion. It's my opinion, yeah? Of what we can do. And I'm out here fishing for ideas. And I want the Blues to come together. And we, we, see, what, we, we see what we can do. You know what I mean? We see what we can do. Um, first of all, enjoy Leipzig, Champions League. We're already qualified. Let's go there and enjoy the game. And let's make sure next Sunday against uh, Tottenham, we're on it. Let's get behind the lads from full stop. Get behind them. I am actually on City Extra tonight as well at six o'clock. We'll probably touch on this subject. So if you want to get over there, get over there. Please hit the like button. Please hit the share button. If you think I'm talking sense, Share it. If you think I'm talking shit, don't share it. It's just the way it is. Come on, sir.